Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to confer the second set of our annual Dean's Awards for Excellence in Mentoring for graduate students and postdoctoral scholars. This award was created to recognize and honor the often overlooked contributions of our graduate students and postdocs as mentors to their colleagues and peers and to support a mentoring culture that encourages diversity and increases equity in the biomedical, social, and population sciences. As nominations opened in early March, the timeline of this year's award coincided with the ramp up of the COVID-19 pandemic in the Bay Area and subsequent shelter in place orders. But even as the pandemic grew and uncertainty was cast over nearly every aspect of our lives, many of you still took the time to nominate the students and postdocs who've made a positive impact on your training and research, your academic success, and your sense of connection to our campus community. For the review committee, reading about the many ways our trainees are going above and beyond to support one another was a ray of sunshine at a time when it can be really hard to see through the gloom. But against the dark backdrop of the pandemic and all that has followed in its wake, the efforts of the students and scholars you'll hear about today shine that much brighter. Since we can't gather together in person for this celebration, we've created a video to highlight this year's award winners. It will give you a glimpse of the diversity and quality of mentorship, leadership, and professionalism among our graduate students and postdoctoral scholars. I'm so happy to introduce you to this year's awardees. Our graduate student awardees are Alan Bonney, Alexandra Long, and Emmanuel Oniwera. The postdoctoral scholar awardees are Renaud Lajoie, Matthew McCarroll, and Helen Wilsey. Let's listen. My name is Hannah El Samad. I am a professor of biochemistry and biophysics and also the vice chair of that department. Alan has, has, has truly been a, a scientific and but also a community pillar in our lab. The three words I would use to describe Alan are compassionate, knowledgeable, and constructive. So compassionate is self-explanatory. He's just the person full of empathy. Uh, to others. He is also a fantastic scientist. I mean, his knowledge uh, about biology is, is just incredible. And he is a positive person who just gives constructive, useful uh, criticism to his mentees. Alan is undoubtedly going to be a fantastic scientist. I also think he will be taking so many people with him to those heights. Uh, he will have such an impact as someone who believes so deeply uh, in mentoring and bringing the best out of people. Uh, he will be such a role model and, insp and inspire so, so many. My name is Alan Bonney, and for the past six years, I've been a graduate student at UCSF in the biophysics program. I would describe my mentorship leadership style is one that's based on empathy and relationships and really finding a common ground with the individual I have the honor of working with. Uh, first thing I do over coffee is, you know, just ask them how, what's their story. I have always told, preached to my students in the classroom that, you know, STEM is the future. STEM is the, is a driver of, you know, societal change. I firmly believe your work should not define you as a person. It's a, it's a component of that. And so, you know, I want to build that bridge of empathy and, you know, what commonalities can we have so that I can identify some strengths and maybe areas for growth. And then eventually the goal is to leverage those strengths to, you know, rise up and improve upon those areas for growth. I find mentorship to be integral to my professional identity and my career outlook. This really started at my time in the classroom. I was a high school teacher prior to my time in grad school. And it was really there that I became aware and deeply ingrained of how you don't really understand something until you teach it. The way that I find that confidence is important in mentorship is I think once you plant that seed, it's really hard to take that away. Um, and I think it's important to foster that as well. Uh, from my experience, I mentioned, you know, I've, as you know, now having been in grad school for six years, I'm very confident in my abilities. I know myself very well. Others, you know, that are coming straight out of college or even when I work with, you know, high school interns or college students, 
they don't necessarily have that. And I think that's a very precarious time in which you can either break that or you can make it. And so that's why I think it's important to quickly identify the strengths in a mentee. So you can foster that because, you know, it's, I, I, I think confidence is, is a huge determining factor. And I think it sets the tone for your ability to see the world. And I think once you have confidence, then you're able to take on new tasks and push yourself. When I mentor individuals, you know, I'm here because people have paid the path for me. And I believe it's incumbent upon me and, and individuals that are in my position to pay it forward and open those doors of opportunity for others, especially those that are underrepresented uh, that, you know, oftentimes look like me. And so, you know, I think mentorship is incredibly powerful because it's at, it's very personal and you can instill those seeds of confidence that people may not have. And I think that's a huge deterrent that unfortunately plagues a lot of underrepresented people in the sciences. I'm incredibly grateful that this award recognizes that, but the true reward is, you know, one of my mentees just got accepted to a PhD program. Another one of my students in high school or that I taught when she was 14 is applying to grad school, you know, this coming year. Those are the things that are, I would trade my PhD in for them in a heartbeat. Like that makes it so much more valuable. My name is Sophie Dumont and I'm a faculty at UCSF in uh, bioengineering. So I nominated Alex, uh, Alexandra, we call her Alex, because I haven't known a, a student or a postdoc at UCSF who's contributed more to mentorship than her. And also, I have surely learned more about mentorship from her than she has learned uh, from me. So Alex has had a, a huge impact uh, in her lab in the UCSF, UCSF community, both in terms of formal mentorship, the kind of mentorship that you expect, uh, but perhaps even more so an informal mentorship going above and beyond uh, what you would normally find. And by mentorship, I mean mentorship of skills and knowledge, but also mentorship in terms of helping people figure out who they are, who they want to be, and helping them get there. Um, and to do that effectively, that means that she was able to, to adapt uh, to her mentees because different mentees thrive under different types of mentorship, but, but she was able to take the time and, and listen and get to know the people that she was mentoring. And, and mentoring is much more about listening than talking and, and she knows that. Um, and it takes time to get to know someone and, and to support someone as they're discovering who, who they are and, and who they want to be. And, and to do so without, uh, without judgment and uh, give them some ideas and challenge them sometimes and point them to resources and help them to become the best version of who they want to be, not who you think they should be. So Alex's outreach and, and mentorship efforts um, were really appreciated by, by the community. And in one way in which they weren't pointed to me is they made clear to the community and that that these efforts are important and are essential to developing the, the scientists that we want to develop, both people who are already at UCSF and, and people who might not know that they have a scientist in them. Uh, and, and often these efforts are, are invisible and unappreciated. And, and uh, by saying, hey, I'm taking time and I'm doing this and I'm doing this the right way. And, and this is important to me. It shows to other people that, that this is how we can uh, build a, a stronger scientific community by getting the best brains on board, no matter where they are right now. I'm Alex Long, a recent graduate of the Tetrad program at UCSF in Sophie Dumont's lab. Being a mentor, I think, is really deeply intertwined um, to me. It's part of my professional identity as a scientist and, and teacher. Um, and it's a thing that brings me a lot of joy and meaning, like selfishly. Um, I, I think I really enjoy seeing other people learn and grow and succeed, um, especially, you know, that helps me weather my own sort of highs and lows and search for meaning in science. I'd say that my um, mentorship style and, and mentorship abilities have changed a lot over time, um, especially during my time at UCSF. Um, and I would say the most notable way that I can think of that it's changed is as I've grown more independent as a scientist. I think that's really affected my ability to try to help uh, other graduate students um, and undergraduates and um, grow their own independence as scientists and build both the confidence and the skills in order to, to do that. Um, 
And I think that's been modeled for me by lots of amazing mentors at UCSF that I've been really lucky to learn from. Um, and I think really moved from maybe focusing earlier on as a mentor, trying to like help someone by giving them advice to really a model where I'm trying to like foster their own learning, facilitate their own problem solving and connecting them with resources and support, but not telling them how I think that something should be done because there's many, many ways to be a scientist. My name is Lauren Friedman. I am in the master's entry program in nursing in the psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner track. Emmanuel is currently a psychiatric nurse. He is fulfilling his dream of providing care and advocacy for underserved individuals. His skills and qualities enable him to be an excellent nurse and I wholeheartedly believe he will be an exceptional nurse practitioner. Once starting the program, Emmanuel hosted study sessions for myself and a handful of other students. This was in summer quarter, and by the end of fall quarter, the study sessions were comprised of over half the class. Emmanuel has made a huge impact on so many people, and I know his positive presence will be continue to be felt by so many others. Emmanuel reminds us not only to take care of ourselves, but also our peers. He has taught us the importance of unity and coming together to motivate and inspire. I remember asking Emmanuel how we could repay him for all of the hard work he has put into helping us prepare in the program. And he said, you can repay me by being a fantastic nurse and nurse practitioner to your patients. That just shows how dedicated he is. My name is Emmanuel Onyuara. Um, I'm a psychiatric NP student at UCSF. Um, I'm heading into my second year of the program. You know, as a, as a scientist and a scholar, I believe that, you know, we are called to make, you know, to impact people's life, either, you know, scientifically, scholarly, and just on a human level. And so I believe that part of us scientists, like we are doers, we are supposed to do things. We are supposed to, you know, enforce, you know, change, uh, evidence-based change. And so that calls for collaboration as well, uh, because we are, you know, you can, we can, you can never stand alone. Some of the key things that I've um, noticed, number one, increased confidence. Um, and, and also just this has come because of just working with people over time and knowing that I don't have to be the best in order to mentor someone, you know. Um, and also I would say, understanding the concept of me versus um, us component, you know, concept in that, you know, I can be good at what I do, but if I don't pass that on to, to, to so many people, then, you know, uh, I can't be in every place at the same time. So by helping other people understanding the concept of, you know, of a community and, 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 and people with the same mindset, then it actually, impact so many people. Um, I've also understood also just um, that mentorship is just learning, part of learning as well. The, the, the lived experiences that I, I had with that, you know, and coming into, you know, uh, MEPEN, you know, we, most of the students that come in are, you know, older, they have careers and, you know, uh, the, some of them left college a long time ago. And so you have to adjust, not just academically, but, you know, socially and emotionally and physically actually adjust to that. And so my experiences uh, going through this program, you know, it, I had a lived experience and I knew that I could not do it alone. Um, and, and so that has really impacted my ability to just be a mentor and, let, and, and support other students that are in the classes, you know, uh, the, the cohort behind me and just let them know that, you know, what, what you're going through is real. What you're feeling is actually valid but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. My name is Amelia Strom and I'm a research assistant in Gilbert Benefitch's lab at the Memory and Aging Center at UCSF. Mentorship is such a priority for Renault. It's something that he really focuses on. I knew how much it would mean to him to be recognized for that. He consistently checks in with his mentees um, to ask us, how our interactions with him are going, how our workload is looking like, if we need more interaction with him, less interaction with him, a change in that, um, and consistently confirming that, that 
we feel comfortable asking him these questions and, and asking for these, these changes to our, to our relationship. If I were to describe Bruno as a mentor in three words, I think they would be generous, positive, and effective. I think generous is the biggest one. I think everybody would agree with me on that. He's exceptionally generous with his time, with his attention, with his wisdom, not only for his direct mentees, but really anybody at the Memory and Aging Center who wants to know more about, about what our lab is doing and wants help with their own projects. He's also positive in that he really encourages and um, provides positive feedback and celebrates our successes. For example, when I give a presentation at lab meeting, even if it's just two slides, the first thing I see when I look back down at my phone is a text from Renault saying, great job, it, it pulled together really nice. And then I say effective because these qualities really translate into um, him being effective at inspiring confidence in his mentees. I know that anyone who has the chance to be mentored by him really feels like he understands them as an individual with their own goals and their own concerns, and uh, they really leave feeling more confident in, in their own abilities. My name is Renaud Lajoie, and I have been a postdoc at UCSF for about four years. Um, I work in the neurology department and more specifically at the Memory and Aging Center. I, I think I have been given a lot of mentoring opportunities from very early stages of my career. Uh, and um, I've definitely learned from each of them and, uh, you know, about mentoring in general and about myself as a mentor. I've learned a ton from like... Um, discussing and brainstorming with my uh, mentees and my fellow uh, postdocs or um, even supervisors um, uh, or my own mentors uh, talking about, you know, am I doing this right? Do I know what I'm doing here? Um, am I am I keeping good boundaries? I think, again, it's, it's really a work in progress and it can only work if you are open to feedback. Actually, I think mentoring is one of the key parts of, of our job uh, as a scientist. And I think, um, you know, we often think about it as like a research and teaching uh, job. Um, and I used to think about, uh, you know, the teaching part not being something I was so interested in uh, originally. Uh, and that's because I don't really love lecturing in like big class kind of uh, settings. But actually, as soon as I started mentoring people, it was very obvious that I, I really loved it. And, um, you know, I think it's not only it's a part of the job and it's something we need to do to keep a lab going, uh, but I do think that it brings specific types of satisfactions in the job. And I do think that mentoring is a little bit different in that, like sometimes you get really short term progress and reward. And it's actually very interesting to see that you can have a direct impact on some people and help them and teach them and like guide them a little bit. Um, and I think that for me, there's, not only the tasks that we have to accomplish, but just a lot of satisfactions that you can get out of um, mentoring and, and helping people. I'm Dara Chang. I'm a six year graduate student in the PSPG program at UCSF. Uh, and about three years ago, I joined the Coquel lab where uh, Matt has been one of my postdoc mentors. So since I joined the lab about three years ago, um, Matt has always been a great mentor. He's incredibly supportive and very knowledgeable about all kinds of scientific topics, obviously. And he really encourages us to ask questions um, so that we really understand what we're doing instead of just kind of going through the motions. So I think three of the words that I would use to describe Matt as a mentor are he's very patient, he's very motivating, and he's very conscientious. I think Matt would make an amazing PI with um, as much as he cares about his students. I, you know, I could comfortably say that any graduate student or other trainee who goes through his lab would be able to, um, you know, he would be, they would be able to successfully have all the skills that they need to become really proficient scientists. And the other thing is, you know, grad school is tough um, with Matt's positivity and supportiveness that will really allow any of his trainees to flourish. And you know, even if he goes into industry or um, not a non-academic position, I think that sense of, or that idea of mentorship, he'll still have that and those skills will still be useful no matter where he ends up.
My name is Matt uh, McCarroll. I am a postdoc at UCSF on the Mission Bay campus, um, and we are at the IND, which is the Institute of Neurodegenerative Diseases, uh, which is in the Sandler Neuroscience Building. The way my mentorship has evolved over time, I think a great way to illustrate this is through a story that I have of one of my first mentees. Yeah, he was this, you know, fun um, and really inspired, really um, real go-getter. Um, so I was teaching him some sort of more advanced techniques after we worked together for a while. And, you know, with uh, difficult experiments, sometimes you, you find a way that works and then you just sort of stick to that because, you know, they're, they're impossible sometimes. So you find something that works and you just stick with that. And so I was showing him my sort of rigid, you know, protocol that I found to work. And so every time I would label off a step, he would, you know, sort of dissect that step. And he's like, why does it work like that? Is that the only way it could work? Are there other approaches? And it sort of got, you know, almost frustrating at a point. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just trying to show you how to do this. And so then I sort of took a step back and I was like, you know what, like, why don't I just kind of show him my method? And then instead of micromanaging him, like, why don't I let him, you know, sort of go through the process himself, see that if he can, you know, find his own direction, sort of own way to uh, accomplish this experiment. And then at the end of the day, we'll have these benchmarks, you know, like, um, did you, did you have good uh, efficiency? Um, did the controls work, you know, like, is it good fidelity? And so we would go through those at the end of the day to see if his own methods that he was developing, if those were working well or not. And then eventually, you know, he actually um, was able to accomplish the experiment with, yeah, great, uh, great benchmark uh, results. And yeah, it was cool just to see him sort of figure out his own process. So I think that's an important aspect that I've learned um, that you can't just sort of micromanage people so much that, you know, like they have to do it your way. You can sort of let them find their own successes as well. Hi, I'm Matthew State. I'm uh, Obendorf Family Distinguished Professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Chair of the Department of Psychiatry at UCSF. The three words that uh, best describe Helen as a mentor, I think, are brilliant, dedicated, and generous. I had a tough time with that last one because I also wanted to say kind. Uh, she is obviously a brilliant scientist, uh, really um, already recognizes one of the leading uh, young scientists in her field. Uh, but she shows also tremendous dedication to inspiring and teaching the next generation of scientists. Uh, and she does that in a way that really um, shows her kindness and her generosity of spirit. One of the things that I think has been um, uh, maybe not unique, but distinctive about her role within the laboratories that were involved uh, in a number of large collaborations. And, and one of them that we've been particularly uh, committed to and involved in um, lately has been the Psychiatric Cell Mapping Initiative, which she clearly shows up as an outstanding and devoted mentor, but she's also been very successful in making sure that our students and trainees uh, really are highlighted uh, in, in a large and complex a set of collaborations. That's something that actually, you know, experienced PIs can have a difficult time navigating. So um, I think uh, it's the combination of her gift for teaching, her ability to inspire, but also her ability to navigate uh, these uh, complex, larger uh, scientific collaborations that really differentiates her as a uh, mentor um, uh, and a teacher. I think what is so remarkable about her is that her love of science really shines through. And I think particularly now, uh, there's just no more important time to, for um, uh, someone like Helen to be able to communicate uh, to those who are coming up after her, uh, what it means to have real passion about the work. Um, so um, uh, I, I don't think that there is a ceiling uh, to Helen's success. I, I just hope that I'm on the list when the awards are being handed out. My name is Helen Wilsey and I'm a postdoc in the Department of Psychiatry and I use frogs to understand the pathobiology underlying autism. My mentorship style is really all about the idea that enthusiasm is contagious. If I can get excited about something, I think that that carries forward into my group uh, members and that they can get excited about it too. They see that I just love frogs and I love figuring out what these genes are doing during brain development. And I think they can see that and they pick up on it too. 
I also acknowledge that a lot of the things we do in lab are not that glamorous. So I try to make them a little bit more fun, you know, put a Bluetooth speaker in the microscope room for those long days of imaging, have a pizza party after lab cleanup days. Those seemingly little things actually really add up and really make people more excited to come into the laboratory. I also really try to um, make sure that I try to put myself in their shoes. You know, if I dropped a glass dish of very precious samples, how would I feel? You know, I feel awful. So I try to be the voice that I would want to hear if I, if I heard that, and if I did that, you know, and I would also try and make sure to know that not everybody reacts like I do. Not everybody has the same head as I do. So I try to make sure that I get to know everybody and, and make sure that I can be the voice that they would want to hear um, when something doesn't go quite as, as well as they wanted it to. In working with this psychiatric cell map initiative, I've, I've really had an opportunity to work with many groups who from very different disciplines than what I study, very different approaches, very different methods. And in that, you know, working with some of the people there, I've had to learn a whole new vocabulary and come up with an entire new way of communicating with people with very different expertise. And so that's been illuminating for me to learn how to bridge those gaps and be effective and discover things that we could never find uh, individually on our own. So it's been very empowering to understand how to bridge those gaps and, and still be an effective leader, uh, despite some, some gaps in knowledge about uh, the, the methods. I've really learned to, to give my mentees more freedom to make mistakes, uh, pause a little bit longer before I give my ideas, let them really form their own opinions. And, and sometimes that means making mistakes and that's okay. I also try to really make an atmosphere where failure is an accepted part of the process. We celebrate when there's a failure because it means there's an opportunity to learn something new. Warmest congratulations to all of our winners and our honorable mentions. As you've seen, these dedicated students and postdocs play a crucial role in our campus community, providing scholarly guidance and expertise, as well as inspiration and encouragement. As their dean, I couldn't be prouder of their accomplishments as scientists and as researchers, and I'm deeply grateful to them for helping others in our community to feel both valued and supported. I should mention that the Graduate Division received dozens of impressive nominations, so I also want to thank and cheer on every single person who was nominated for the award this year. Together, you make UCSF a better place for all of your peers and colleagues to work and study, and you make this university a stronger institution. Sincere thanks again to those of you who made nominations for taking the time to recognize and bring to light this year's winners and nominees. I'd also like to recognize and thank the members of the Graduate Division and Student Academic Affairs who worked to re-envision this award ceremony into this format as a virtual celebration of our awardees and our community. In closing, I want to urge everyone to take care of yourselves as you also mentor and support those around you during this challenging period. As Maya Angelou said, in order to be a mentor and an effective one, one must care. You must care. You don't have to know how many square miles are in Idaho. You don't need to know what is the chemical makeup of blood or water. Know what you know and care about the person. Care about what you know and care about the person you're sharing with.